As with objects, lists are a powerful aspect of flowgramming. In this lesson, we'll take a deeper dive into lists to explain what they are, how they work, and the best ways to use them in your flows. Just like objects are collections of key value pairs of a variety of data types, lists are similarly a collection of values of the same data type. Rather than being identified by alphanumeric keys, they're simply ordered by the number of items contained in a given list. Let's take a look at a few situations where lists can be useful in flows. In a project management context, you might need to find all of the people who have not yet completed their tasks and send them each a reminder email. In a sales context, you may need to retrieve all rows from a spreadsheet and figure out who has landed this quarter's largest deal. In the context of customer success, you could have a table full of customer data and need to send an email to check in with each of the customer support managers who have customers still undergoing the onboarding process. Each of these tasks can use lists to check a large but consistently formatted data series to perform a relevant action. Although there are many other ways to implement lists in similar flows, setting up a process to automatically iterate through each item in a list will remain relatively consistent from flow to flow. Although lists contain many values, in a consistent data type doesn't mean they only support one type of data. A list can contain strings of text, numbers, and even objects. Let's learn a little bit about each and how they work. The text type can contain lists of words and other text strings. The AA icon beside a text field denotes its type. Number lists work similarly to text lists. The console indicates a number with the 1, 2, 3 icon adjacent to any number field. By clicking these icons on your list output, you can access a drop-down menu that allows you to set the list type. Because text lists can contain any alphanumeric characters, numeric lists may be misunderstood as text lists. Make sure to always set the type of your list output to the format you need if it isn't already in that format. In addition to text and number lists, you can also have lists of objects. As with objects, these lists use the JSON format. Lists of objects are represented by a cylinder icon. Now let's review some of the most common cards you'll find yourself using to build fantastic flows. In the Workflows console, list functions let you create, manipulate, and retrieve data from a list. The add function retrieves an item from a list using the index of the item. The construct function creates a list by dragging, dropping items, or typing them in the card. The for each function is an essential card that processes a list by running a child flow on each item in that list. We'll discuss child flows in depth in another lesson. The link function counts the number of items in a list. In addition to counting the total items for other purposes, you'll likely find that you'll often use this card to determine if a list is empty before continuing on with your flow. The list to text function converts a list into a single string of text using an optional separator of your choosing. For example, you could create a comma-separated list of products to include in an email or even a series of values that can be imported into a spreadsheet application. The reverse function simply reverse the order of items in a list. Finally, the sort function sorts a list from its smallest value to its largest. If you're working with a list of objects, you'll find additional cards that perform operations for that list type. With these cards, you will need to specify a path or key if working with an object. If working with text or numeric lists, you can leave these fields blank. Doing this will allow you to find all values in a numeric list that are less than 10, for example. Let's take a look at these cards and what they do. The filter function filters a list to include only the items that meet a condition that you specify. The find function finds only the first item in a list that meets your specified condition. The pluck function takes a list of objects and produces a new list based on the path and key specified. Indexing is another useful method when working with lists. Indexing allows you to quickly find an item in a list by its position. The position of a value in a list is referred to as its index. While you may be accustomed to starting your list with the number one, the first item in a computer's list always has an index of zero. As previously mentioned, you'll often use the for each function card to iterate through items in a list. When you iterate through a list, you execute a series of operations for each item it contains. These operations take the form of child flows. If you had five items in a list, for example, iterating through that list would execute a child flow five times. 